Hello guys, Dan here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to stop the lag and slash stuttering in OBS when you're switching between scenes. So I guys, I've used OBS for quite a while now, and I've actually only just kind of, you know, realised, the well, kind of found this feature. It's the global sources, Now I never thought, you know, what's the point using a global source, this uses more CPU usage, but by using a global source, when you switch between scenes, just going to demonstrate actually, if I click on monitor, it's kind of a fade, and... That's what I never kind of got before, and it, it, it's just kind of like a stutter. So if I click the monitor, I would kind of stop like, and then it, it would then just go boom, and not fade. It, it, it would just be a straight cut. Now, as you can see, it's fading, and it's all nice, and this is how OBS was kind of intended to be used. Um, now, to do this, I'm just going to switch over to the monitor. Now, what you need to do in OBS is you need to click on global sources and add a global source for your actual media. Now, once you've done that, you click on it, then you click OK, and then when you create a new scene, you then, instead of going to add and click on it, you go to global sources and then add it from there. This, guys, will stop the actual, um, you know, lag when you um, change scenes in OBS. However, there's one downfall we're using this. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little kind of line there. I might have, have to zoom in while editing this video, but there's a, there's a little line to the left of where it says monitor capture and then where the tick is, I suppose. And this means it's always active. Same with the webcam. I can't see the webcam now because I switched it, but there is a little line and that line means it's always active. Same with the gameplay window, monitor window, webcam window, everything I actually have on here has the line. Now, the, the downfall to this Fair enough, it is smooth and it, it stops all the lag and everything in, in OBS, which is good. Um, it, as you can see, the CPU utilization is like 25%. And I suppose this is a bad thing if you're gaming and the game requires a lot of CPU usage. Now, I have an i5. It's a quad-core i5. It's not hyper in it or anything. It, it's, a, it's a quad-core i5 running at 3.0 gigahertz. Turbo's to 3.2. And, uh, yeah, this is what I kind of get. So it uses 20 slash 23 um, CPU utilization. Now, now this isn't bad, and it's miles better than what it would be if if we're using the standard um, times uh, 264 encoder. But by using the NVIDIA chip, which is the um, the um, H264 encoding chip on the actual GPU, um, you know this is it's just incredibly good. Intel and NVIDIA have both kind of brought out their own solutions to make encoding incredibly good, to be honest. This is the NVIDIA option. So if you have an NVIDIA 600 or 700 series GPU, you can really, really take the strain off off your CPU and, uh, yeah, make your, your GPU do the encoding. Or if you have an NVIDIA GPU, if you're going to the BIOS and enable Quick Sync, this option will be available. If I click it now, it actually happens, but you can enable Quick Sync. Most of Intel processors, including the 3 and 4th series. So 3rd and 4th series processors support Quick Sync. And then, yeah, you can kind of encode video on the fly, just like I'm doing right now. So there we are. Anyway, guys, I hope this has kind of helped. And yeah, yeah just to kind of conclude, you need to add a global source. So you click Add, you add your media, and then whenever you add a media to your sources, you go through the global source and click on it from there. That's kind of about it. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video, goodbye.